Okay, in this video we're going to look at using a while true looping structure. So to begin with, you want to make sure if you haven't already downloaded the Loop Drills AIA file and open it up. And we want to change to screen 3. So there are other video tutorials that are using screen 1 and screen 2, but for this one we're going to use screen 3. And it's pretty much a similar setup from the other two screens. We have an output label where our result is going to go and then we have our apply button that is going to trigger our loop to run and then do something to display in our label. So I'm going to switch over to the blocks view and in the blocks view we have a variable set up already called count and it's set to 1. Now what we're going to do with this is first of all we're going to initialize our variable to 20 so let's start by changing this to 20 and then when the apply button is clicked we're going to clear out the text that's in the output label and then use a while loop and we're going to see while the count is greater than or equal to 1 to print out the value of the count. So we're going to use our variable here literally as a counter to start counting and we're just going to use numbers because it's a good way to kind of get the feel for how a loop is going to work. So let's grab the apply button event handler and we're going to set the output label text to an empty string clear out whatever might be in there from any previous examples. And then we're going to grab a while loop. So the while loop is in the control blocks and we have down here while test do. Now I should mention that a while loop is a very common programming structure. Just about every programming language will have a while loop. So if you understand the concept between actually any of these looping structures and in particular a while loop, when you encounter them in another programming language, the syntax might be a little different, but the logic between how they work will be the same. So in a while loop, whatever is in the do block will happen as long as our test that we build in here is true. So whatever we define in here is going to have to be true in order for the do block to execute. The other thing you have to remember to do is you have to make sure that this test that you create eventually becomes false. Otherwise your app is going to crash because you ended up with what's called an endless or an infinite loop. So there needs to be a way built in there for it to end. So we're going to be using our variable count. And again, it we have in there that uh, we're going to start at 20. And as long as count is greater than 1, greater than or equal to 1, then it's going to do this loop. So we're going to use the value of count and we want to check and see if it's greater than or equal to 1. So we're going to need to use the math blocks in here. Right? We need to use this equal block and then we can change this to greater than or equal to. So I'm going to say while count is greater than or equal to 1. I'm just going to come to the math block and grab a zero and then change that to one. So we're building a condition in here for it to check and if this condition is true then it's going to do what's in the do block and if it's not true then it won't do what's in here. So while this is true what we're going to do is change our output label text. So we're going to set our text to and we're going to use a join 
We've done this in a couple of the other looping examples, so I'm not going to go into a big description about this. But we're going to join whatever is currently in the output label. So output label text to whatever the value of count is. And I'm going to grab a string in here. And backslash n is a new line, right? Make sure it's a backslash, not a forward slash, because then it won't work correctly. Now, if I were to just run this this way, which do not do this on your own, don't test it yet. This is an example of an infinite loop. And here's why. When it gets here, count is 20, right? So 20 greater than or equal to one is true. So then it's going to get what's in the label and put in 20 and a new line character. And then it's going to come back up and it's going to start this loop again and is 20 greater than or equal to one? True. So it's going to print 20 with a new line character. Then it starts the loop again and 20 greater than or equal to one? True. So you're getting the idea here that 20 the value of count is never changing, it's always 20. So this would print 20 new line, 20 new line, 20 new line. And then your app or your computer is going to get a little tired and start to complain and then crash. So we need to build in a way here for the loop to end. So all we have to do is change the value of count when it comes through the end of the loop. So up here I'm going to grab a set count to, and I'm going to grab a math block and let's just subtract. We need to subtract because we're starting at 20 and we want it to eventually get to be not greater than or equal to 1. So we want, we're going to change this by 1. We're going to subtract 1 each time and we're going to get the value of count. So this is going to change count. So it's, say when it comes through the loop the first time, this is 20. So we're going to change it to 20 minus 1, which is 19. So after we do 20 minus 1, that gets saved in count. So then it's 19. Comes back up. 19 greater than or equal to 1, true print out whatever was in the text label from before, which is 20 new line. So then it's going to print 20 new line, 19 new line. Then it comes down here. 19 is going to be changed from 19 minus 1 to 18. And then it comes back up. 18 greater than or equal to 1, true. So let's see what this looks like when we run it. So when we apply right 2019 all the way down it stops at three on mine uh, simply because I don't have enough room here so I want to change the height of my label let's change it to 70 percent and then let me apply it again and now I have enough room so mine didn't have enough room to show the ending number so think about this right as it goes through the loop each time it's going to change the value of what's in count and it needs to eventually make this test condition false now think about this question what is the value of count when the loop ends pause this and try to answer that question because it's an important Thing to know when you're building your loops to make sure that you're stopping the loop when you need it to stop. So what is the value of count when the loop ends? So if we look here, we know that it gets to 1, right? It prints all of these and we're, we're getting count to 1. So it prints 1 and a new line. So now we say 1 minus 1 
is zero, count is set to zero, comes back up to the loop and it says zero greater than or equal to one is false. So that means count is zero when the loop ends. You may find some questions like that on the quiz or a final exam. Uh, it's a favorite one of programming instructors because it's not trying to be a trick question, but you have to be able to be precise when knowing when you want your loops to end. So that's an overview of using a while loop.